Good evening, uh, dear friends, uh, everybody uh, joining us here tonight. I'm your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare and welcome to Social Distancing Theater. Before we begin, I'd like to just take a quick moment to address uh, what's going on right now um, in America. Um, here's the thing, I'm not qualified to speak publicly on the topic of racism. It is not my place to do so. I have never experienced it personally, and you don't need, you don't need to hear yet another white guy talk about it, but I will speak out publicly against racism and bigotry from here on out in all its forms. And if I have not in the past, I'm sorry. Truly, legitimately, deeply. Let me just say this, black lives matter. And I stand with you. To that end on Saturday, I'll be doing my show with the New Jersey Renaissance Fair, Romeo and Juliet, the Flying Implement of Doom Edition. And all of the money that gets raised from doing that performance will go to the Minnesota Freedom Fund. I hope that you're going to join me. And now in honor of Pride Month, the social distancing players, the online theater company started when we all had to go indoors in groups of less than 10, present their fourth live online production, A Midsummer Night's Dream, A Gay Old Time. The purpose of the social distancing players is to provide semi quasi gainful employment to actors and performers whose livelihoods have been detrimentally affected by the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. Each production is funded by an independent Indiegogo campaign with the hopes of paying each of the professional actors at least $100 and hopefully more. You can contribute to tonight's production by clicking on the link in the show notes. If you are interested in joining Shakespeare and the social media players for a future production, please message me, Shakespeare, at facebook.com slash Shakespeare Approves. Send me an email to Shakespeare at ShakespeareApproves.com or just wait until Monday when the next Indiegogo campaign for Macbeth, Death by Fluffy Kittens, goes live. But now, allow me to introduce you to tonight's players in order of appearance. A saying the role of Hermia, Molly Thomas. You might know her from the Vixens on Guard and she's going to bring her camera live any second now so you can wave hi to her. <laughs> Playing the part tonight of Lysander, Sam Eisenhuth from the Son of York Shakespeare Theater. Playing the part of Helena, Christina Coyer. Go like her Facebook page, Christina Coyer. And also, you know, might know her as the Contessa Catalina from Chaste Treasure. Playing the part of Demetrius, Julie award-winning actor, Jim Teasdale. And he's got moves like Jagger. Hmm. <laughs> Aegeus tonight is being played by one of our patrons. And you can also be in the shows moving forward. I like to have patrons in all of my shows. Joel Kassa is a saying the role of Aegeus. And once he makes his camera live, you'll be able to see that he is putting on the Ritz. <laughs> Pimpin' ain't easy. <laughs> Mustard Seed tonight is being played by the lovely and talented Erin Bernardi. She plays at least five musical instruments, which is five more than I play. <laughs> Mustard Seed, I'm sorry, Cobweb is being played by David Makovsky. <laughs> you might know him as the Foxy Bard. And together, he and Aaron make up drunk and disorderly. Oberon tonight is being played by the lovely, the talented, the genderific Daniel Greenwolf. You might know him from, Daniel, this way. <laughs> you might know him from being Daniel Greenwolf. Celtic and Ginger Magician. Oh, go on with you. Oh, saucy. <laughs> Titania tonight is being played by Claire Bohannock, the artistic director of the Zenith Players. Speaking of the Zenith Players, you can join them this Saturday night. So just three nights away with an all-female production of Julius Caesar. Go to facebook.com slash zenithplayers for more info. Peas Blossom 
was going to be played by one of our patrons tonight, Maisha L and I. However, the power went out. And so Peas Blossom is being played by Peas Blossom the Understudy, <laughs> Melissa L. E. Baker, founder of Chased Treasure. Learn more about Chased Treasure by going to chasetreasure.com. Also, she's my number one. She literally texts me every day and tells me what to do. <laughs> Puck is being played by newcomer to our stage, Natalia Kozlovsky. Did I say your name right? It's a close, is it close enough? Is it in the ballpark? All right, say it for me. Say it for everyone here. Natalia Kozlovsky. Natalia Kozlovsky, there we go. Did I say it right that time? All right, very good. She is joining us as one of our patrons. Bottom is being played by the effervescent, the ginger adjacent, Tom Zadoiko. You might know Tom from his work with... <laughs> I, I'm sorry. You might know Tom from all of his work in Renaissance fairs near you. Go check him out. And finally, I, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare, am being played by myself. My legal name is Dan Castellic, and every once in a while, I'd like you to know that. But let's start our story. So friends, I'm going to start this show the way I start all of my Renaissance Fair productions in person. Lords, ladies, non-binary friends, gentles all, I am Will Shakespeare. Oh my goodness, I forgot one of my actors. I am so very sorry. No show would be complete without me messing up. Please welcome to the stage my final fairy, Dancing Glenn, as played by Reverend Tommy Abbott. He's coming to us from a camping trip. There he is, and he hearts Chase Treasure. He's a huge fan of all of us. I love him so much. Oh my God, Tommy, I am so sorry, I nearly forgot you. He's got tattoos apparently of Chase Treasure. I am learning right now in a chat that we have ongoing. This is insane. I'm gonna need to get a tattoo of it uh, on there. But <laughs> So now let's start our story proper. Friends, I am Will Shakespeare and you can cheer now. Yeah! 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 Give it a give it a gumdrop. Oh, uh, friends! Yay. All right, all right. We're yeah. gonna try this again. And I need all of my patrons who are also joining us here in the show to join me on this one. When I say you can cheer now, I need you to go insane. All of you at home, shoot video of this, people. Who holler, clap, cheer, stomp your feet, whistle, throw small loved ones into the air. Just yeet your kid. Someone yeet Chris Coyer, who's playing Helena for us. I am Will Shakespeare, and you can cheer now. No. 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 I'm wearing so many shirts, don't worry. <laughs> Now, friends, Ow. this story is audience interactive, which means it requires all of your help. So when I say everybody says, ooh, I need to hear all of you say, ooh. Let's try that. Everyone says, ooh. ooh. Everybody says, ah. Ah. People cry out, dear God, what is that thing? Dear God, what is that thing? What is that thing? Is that thing? We have dramatic music. <laughs> that hurt and my soul. Not very dramatic music. <laughs> we have random sound effects of randomness. And is that a we start with a song. So everyone, make your cameras live and join me here on screen for our friends at home. Take your hands, hit your laps two times. Clap your hands one time. Now do that again. Again, again, repeat. All right, you know what, you know what? Just because of all the crazy beats that we're all trying to keep, everyone turn off your microphones and then let's do it again. <laughs> Have your hands, hit it, you lap two times, clap your hands one time, and do it again. Again, again, repeat. Now I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here's my spout. Let me get all steamed up and hear me shout. Chip me over and pour me out, singing I'm a little teapot. 
everyone at home sing it. I'm a little teapot. And here we go. Now Mary had a little lamb, its face was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. It followed her to school one day, which was against the rules. It made the children laugh and play to see a lamb at school. Ba, 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 black sheep singing at home. Ba, 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 black sheep. So that was my Run DMC moment, and I apologize for that one. Let's move on. Now Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Always designate your driver. Sing it. Always designate your driver. It's good advice. Now friends at home, keep that beat going. For you with a few. The proud, the nerds. And you might be thinking, Shakespeare, why are you calling me such names? People, you're at home on a Wednesday night, a perfectly fine Wednesday night, doing this with an idiot who calls himself Shakespeare. It might be on your laptop or streaming to your TV. That's nice too, but that's pretty freaking nerdy. So you are my people. You are the ones who wear the nerdy t-shirts and you know who you are. You are the ones who wear ironic hats like the Mets fan. No one wears a Mets hat and means it. <laughs> you are the ones who use really nerdy language, words like bazinga and hodor and wibbly wobbly timey wimey. You are the ones who understand what a Jeremy barony really means. And so you are my people and I will lead you to freedom. Reach into the bottom of your heart, the cockle of your heart, sub cockle, your left big toe, your neighbor's pocket and sing the final verse with me. For you are my people. Here we go. Five, six, seven, eight. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, louder, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Everybody! Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? Next time, won't you sing with me? Good job, all of you. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Well done, well done, well done. It is so creepy for me to look at all of my actors moving about, but no sound coming from them. It is creepy to me. <laughs> but let us start our story in earnest. Our story begins, as all good stories do, with a once upon a time. In the halcyon days of the heroic age, a time when goddesses and gods walked the earth with mere mortals. This is a story of a girl and a boy. And another girl. And another boy. This is the story of Hermia and her love, Lysander. Let us open our scene in Athens, that place of learning, wisdom, and pure democracy, and which otherwise has nothing to do with our tale. Hermia is going to begin as she turns her microphone on. Oh, I love thee ever so, Lysander. And I've grown quite fond of thee, Hermia. Lysander, I love thee. Mm, thank you. At this moment, her best friend, boon companion, and all around BFF, Helena, the tall and fair, runs into the scene, agitated over something. Helena, my bestie, heart of my heart, what news? Thou seemst ever so agitated. Hermia, bestie, heart of my heart, I have the most terrible news. Oh no, is it your father? Is he sick? Is he dead? What? No. Do you know something? Uh, no. Oh, no. oh, I must remember to have the oracle remind me to check on daddy later. No, beloved bosom sister, my terrible news very nearly concerns thee. What is? Tell us. My ex-boyfriend Demetrius hath returned unto Athens. <gasps> Gasp! Gasp is right. Demetrius? The D-bag. Would we call him a D-bag? 
Oh, yes, my Amazonian friend. For he dumped thee so very hard. And the PG rating of this show does not allow us to use language that is harsher. It was a mutual breakup. That is not what I heard tell, fair Helen. Uh, the way the story was regaled unto mine ear was that he took thee to the fanciest restaurant on the Acropolis, ordered the most expensive dish on the menu, and then sent it away. He said it was a metaphor, and that I was the expensive dish being sent away, and that he, he wanted to try other dishes. <laughs> well, you are well shut of him now. There are plenty of fish in the Aegean. Why are you even a part of this conversation? Because Lysander is my beloved. For I go, so goes he. I mean, it wouldn't hurt anyone, though, were he to say that he loves me. That is a lot to commit to, my sweet, gentle, tiny acorn. And after all, there are so many forms of love. I certainly have that Aristotelian affection and respect for thee. Filial love, one might say. I want more than that. I want thee to feel as I feel, that the arrow of errors hath struck thy heart true. Um, hello? When did this become not about me? Shh, gentle friend, grown-ups are talking. At this moment, who should appear but the aforementioned D-bag? Uh, sorry, but it's rather true. <laughs> no, don't worry, it's cool. I get yeah. it. Yeah. The aforementioned D-bag, Demetrius, Helena's ex-boyfriend and former boon companion to Lysander, with Hermia's father, Aegeus, hot on his heels. Oh, Hermia, gentle Hermia, thy gentle Hermia. I, Demetrius, I'm here for your hand in legally binding matrimony. Daughter, thou shalt wed good Demetrius before this midsummer night is over. Father, I care not a fig for Demetrius. He was for Helena's chosen paramour, and I do not fancy those who treat my friends so ill. Daughter, thou art young in the ways of the world. It bothers me not that thou hast no feelings of love in any variety, Philol, starch, a gap, or otherwise. Honey, this is purely a business transaction. You, you see, I have a lot of gambling debt, and your father has agreed to pay for them for me. <laughs> but what of my happiness? Or even mine? How can I go through life knowing that my dearest friend is wedded to my once dearest love? Well, excuse me, princess. You two are just being so dramatic. Why not just simply go, I don't know, play in tomorrow night's production of Pyramus and Thisbe? I, I would agree, except that women aren't allowed on the stage. I mean, could you imagine such a thing? Good one, my now lad. I know that I liked you for some reason. I'm off to dinner and bed now. Daughter, do as I command. And so Aegeus runs away, laughing into the night. Into the night <laughs> with and the Aegeus. Oh, that was clever, bestie. I mean, he's my dad, so rude. But I care not for what my father says right now. I shan't marry Demetrius. Nay, for thou art thine own woman and must follow the dictates of thine heart. Yes, thank you for the permission on that. Uh, stay out of this, Lysander, and get thee back to thy books of all male Athenian uh, workout regimes or, or, or something. Hermia's my girl. What? No, she's my girl. My girl? My girl. Oh, my girl, my girl, my girl. I do not have to take this. You are being very mean to me, and I'm going to go off and have a nap. And when I return, I fully expect thee, Hermia, to be more than acquiescence for thee, and thee, Lysander, to be uh, engaged in some Greco-Roman wrestling style, wrestling of some such. Well, no, it's, it's just wrestling right now. Uh, I'm sorry, what? You, you called it Greco-Roman wrestling, but as we're in the time of mythology and all that, that it's, it's not even called Rome yet. And, and we're not calling ourselves Greek yet either, so it's, it's just wrestling. Yeah. Really? 
huh, I've learned something new. And I am now edified. Well, if thou hadst not broken up with me, then thou couldst have learned something new all day, every day. Pity oh. that. Well, I am off for my nap, mark me. So, Demetrius leaves the scene for his nap time, for he gets very cross and resembles a D-bag when he does not take his nap. I do not. Just leave the scene! Jesus. I cannot stay here and follow the whims of my father, nor be gambling token for a moron. Beloved Lysander, we must fly this place and be wed secretly in the magical woods outside of town. What? In the magical woods with the fairies and the enchanted forest night club? Ah. How dost thou know about the enchanted forest? They have karaoke night every Pranos day. <laughs> yes, that magical woods. Playmate, friend of my youth, heart of my heart, tell no one where we have gone. My lips are sealed. Wed well, my sweet, tiny friend. So, Hermia and Lysander run away, giggling into the night towards the magical woods and the enchanted forest nightclub, which has two for one happy hours leaving Helena on stage alone to deliver a soliloquy. Now that's a big word. Everyone say it with me. So soliloquy. A soliloquy is when one person, in this case, the tall and fair Helena, speaks to you, the audience, directly, but no one else in the show can hear her. <clears throat> So I am left all alone, all by myself, with no one here beside me. Hermia hath Lysander's love, Demetrius hath her father's love, but whose love hath Helena? Oh, if only someone would love me. And the fairies need to make the microphone live. <laughs> The singing, find her somebody, somebody to, love. to love. Find, find her, her somebody, somebody to love. Somebody, somebody, somebody to love. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. I, I got no, it. No, really, we got somebody that. It's fine. No, we're okay. All right. Thank you. Someone cut his mic. It's my show. As the song cue ends, Demetrius re-enters the seat, freshly awakened from his nap, and spies Helena alone. Helena, thou art alone here. <sighs> Observant one, aren't you? Whither have Hermia and that muscle-bound Lysander gone off to? I shall tell thee nothing. I know nothing. Also, I'm sworn to secrecy, but I don't know nothing about no secrets. I know not why, but me thinks so thou keeping something from me, and I shall find it out. Not possible. If thou me what uh, if thou tellest me what thou knowest, I shall go out with thee again after I wed uh, dear Hermia. Scoundrel! Thou wouldst do such a thing to mine own bestie. I'll use tongue. Oh, all right. Wait, 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 ladies, please as an uncle, to me, and just as someone who cares. Never do that. Please, just, just now. They went off to the magical woods. With the Enchanted Forest Nightclub. How, how do you know, you know what? Never mind, follow me this way. And they run off into the magical <laughs> woods, giggling Aww. into the night. Now, let us move into the magical woods through a special moving into the magical woods special effect provided by all of you. <laughs> we meet the fairy queen and owner of Enchanted Forest, Titania, and her estranged husband, King of the Fae, and Kronos Day Night karaoke DJ, Oberon. They look at each other for a pregnant moment and then... Well, Oberon needs to be here to look at her. And then, well, one of you has to say something. I was waiting for her to say something first. Huh, I win. But no, 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 th that didn't count. I was talking to Shakespeare. No, rules are rules. She's right, rules are rules. I, fine, but that's the last time I play, I ever give you a plus five celestial intervention. 
whatever, dude. I still got my own bardic inspiration. Oh, nice. What rules are you using? Fifth edition. I prefer 3.5. I know, right? <laughs> I still win. You spoke first. Now you're just being a nerd. You're doing it too. But I make it work. Fair point. Where was I? Right. It'll make by moonlight, fair Titania. Eberon, what is it you want? I want the changeling child that was gifted to you as a Michaelmas present. Oberon, children aren't presents. I mean, sure, they're gifts and all that, but they're not presents to be st bestowed upon other people. But, but you got one. Because I was named the child's guardian. <laughs> Still, I want the child. He makes my Instagram go through the roof. What? Oh, yeah. My Insta likes. Sometimes I dress the baby up as a lobster and I'm a chef. Sometimes we have matching tuxedos. Sometimes he's Luke Skywalker. And my cat is Obi Meow Cat Kenobi. People love that kid. Hashtag blessed. Overall. Ah! Babies are not for social media SEO. I'm. I'm. I'm sorry. I don't. I, I don't understand. I'm not. What are they? What are they for, then? Yeah, Shakespeare? I, yeah, you're 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 asking me. <laughs> I don't know. I got nothing, man. Oh, sorry. Overall, I said no, and you can't seem to be able to respect my wishes, nor even simply give me the courtesy of friendly open debate. Until you can do that, we shall no longer speak. And she turns on her heel and leaves in a huff and leaves the scene. <sighs> I will have that changing child. My Insta followers demand it. That video with the cat hanging on the tree is so good and he's got so many more views than I do. I, how do I do it? How do I, ah, I got it. Puck! Robin Goodfellow, get the puck out here. Captain of our fairy band, the midnight hour is close at hand. And whomsoever shall be found without the soul for getting down must stand and face the hound of hell. Cerberus, fluffy pup with three-headed yell. Puck, you shrewd and knavish sprite. Let's have no talk of that this midsummer night. All right. In the clearing of the wood there grows a pleasant little flower which hardly anybody knows. All right. Pluck it out and by and by drip the juice into Tanya's eye. And the first thing she spies what may prove to be a thing that heart may louve. Really? Really? Yeah, it scans. Do it. It scans. Uh, yeah, sure. Do it and I'll give thee a shilling. Do it fast and I'll give thee half a crown. I'll part a girdle round the earth in 30 minutes. No, oh, we don't have that long. Wait, I see a voice. Trust me, it's not a weird thing to say if you're a magical creature. We yeah, got this I'm plus, forget it. Anyways, I am invisible! We are in the magical woods, and I think we're alone now. Indeed, there doesn't seem to be anyone around. I think we're alone now. Oh, children, behave! What was that? I heard nothing. Aren't thou certain? It was the wind! Hoo-hoo! Wind sound! See, just the wind! Huzzah! Huzzah! At this moment, their silent moment is interrupted by Helena. See? Friend of my youth, heart of my heart! Helena, what art thou doing hereupon? Is all well? I have the most dreadful and terrible news. Is it bigger than a bread box? Smaller than a Labrador? Does it rhyme with a tea bag running? Lysander riddles very prettily. What rhymes with tea bag running? The D bag's coming. But seriously, would we call him a D bag? Yes! yes. And he unmutes his microphone. Ta-da! I learned a button. Oh, guess who was back? 
back, back again, again. D bags back, yeah. <clears throat> Tell a friend, guess who's back, guess who's back. Shut up! So you're calling yourself D bag now? No, I mean, yeah, because it only goes with the rhyming scheme. Shut up. Hermia, I found thee, and by the rules of hide and seek, thou art required to marry me. Huzzah. Huzzah. No, not huzzah. This is a no zah. I do not love thee, Demetrius, not in any of the four ways. What does love have to do with it? We're talking marriage. Your father promised me money, and I promised to marry thee. This is very straightforward. Thou art a cad and a scoundrel. Thou didst leave mine own bosom sister, Helena, standing by herself on the Acropolis, feeling quite the loser. <laughs> I didn't feel like a loser. And now thou thinks that thou canst simply win me all, simply by telling me that my father commands it, because thou has a business contract. Listen, I may have issues, but none of them are daddy issues, and I do not look favorably upon those who would use me so. I, I don't I don't feel like a loser. Not most days. Come on, Lysander, let's go get married. All right. I shall follow. And when the officiant says, are there any objections? I will not hold my tongue because I have lots of objections. And they all run away, laughing into the night. Left <laughs> alone <laughs> left alone on again on camera. Helena has another soliloquy. <gasps> Each morning I get up, I die a little, can barely stand on my feet. I take a look in the mirror and cry, boy, what are you doing to me? I spent all of this time in believing you, but I just can't get no relief. Could anybody, anybody be my somebody to love? As the music of the fairies drifts away, Helena gives chase after her erstwhile love and her best friend, and Oberon makes himself visible once more. Poof! Ah, oh, being visible is hard. Run, lass, run like the wind. Park! Here I am. Park! Oh, jeez! <sighs> Sorry. Have you got the flower? Oh, good. Slight change of plan. There's a young Athenian lady who is in love with a bloody moron. Change his mind on the subject. Now go! I have some scrolling to attend to! As yeah. Oberon wanders away... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because he's the cat's hanging on the tree and he's like, hang in there. Oh my god, it's so good. It's so good. As, as Oberon wanders away, letting the Midsummer Night's cat memes wash o'er him... Oh, so good. Puck sees the four Athenians wander into her part of the woods and puts an immediate, super-powerful sleeping spell on them all. Um, sleep! As the four Athenians collapse into magical slumber, but before Puck can apply the magical flower to the Ein... Um, wait, wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, Ein? Yes, Ein. It's early modern English for... Eyes. Oh, I did not know that. I learned something today. Huh. And a rainbow appears. La, 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 la. Hmm. Who should wander into the scene but someone who has already jumped his queue and entered early? The lowest of creatures on God's green earth. An actor. He enters the scene, speaking to no one in particular, as actors are wont to do. I am Nick Bottom. I am a weaver by vocation and a demi-semi-quasi-community professional actor by avocation. <laughs> I have decided that I shall learn my lines in tomorrow night's Pyramus and Thisbe's great adventure by stomping noisily up and down, up and down the woods until the words are carved into the gentle marble of my heart. It, my heart. As Bottom wanders into the woods, 
Puck has but little time to be mystified by him and finish her popcorn, when in should enter the fairy queen, Titania, accompanied by her retinue of fairies, peas blossom, mustard seed, and cobweb, and dancing Glen. The singing and dancing fairies who are largely drunk and disorderly. Fairies, attend me. Ready? Ready? I was born ready. I shall guard thee with my life and let no bug nor gnat nor mosquito enter into the canopy of thy slumber. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a little leaves chance, don't you think? Peas Blossom had a Turkish coffee before we got here. We should start a business and then we can build a cabinet. I have the specs. Yeah! <laughs> well, speak, dancing Glen. Sing for me a lullaby. Oh, to sleep. Oh, to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. My little girlfriend. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Or whatever it is that fairies do. Go to sleep. As Titania falls into her slumber and Cobweb and Mustard Seed wander off further into the wood, definitely desiring to neither start a business nor build a cabinet with the caffeinated peas blossom, Dancing Glen plies and pirouettes about the wood, oblivious to the puck who hath crept back in. I shall cause some mischief here. <laughs> Magicy magic! <laughs> Either I mistake thee quite or thou art neither Coke nor Pepsi, but a Sprite called Robin Goodfellow. I am that merry wanderer of the night. But hark, what happens over there? Is it duck or badger or growl a bear? Growl a bear? I have not heard of them. Oh, they're the worst, the worst of the lot. A cross of the grizzly and the bear of the pole. They rip off your head and devour your soul. Ah! Fairy Queen! She will not come near, and she must not be seen. <laughs> oh, why are the pretty ones the best to bamboozle? I shall rub the juice of the flower in thine eye, and when you awake, thou shalt feel fine. But when thou seest yonder, oh, alas, thou shalt be enamored with an ass. And then Puck looks at the four Athenian youths. What? Uh, I'm sorry. Ute? What is no, a ute? Yeah, it, no, no, your grace. Youths. Go, go back to your memes. <laughs> Maybe I will. Yeah, because I like them. <laughs> Hashtag sick burn. <laughs> Good, go. Fine, I'm going. Good, be gone. Good. I'm doing Good. it. Good, be I'm gone. Going. I'm go. going. Go. Whatever. Just go. Be Whatever. gone. I'm, I'm going. I'm out. All right. Puck looks at the four Athenian youths. I heard that one. Good job. Thank you. And could not decide what to do. Uh, who is who and which is which? Eh, does it matter? I'll have you both love her. Then she can choose. Sweet. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Demetrius, dead or asleep? Oh. Demetrius then awakes, sports Helena, and his heart is struck with love. Helena, Helen, fair. How is I ever wrong to want another? I only love thee. Wanted. But then Lysander awakens, spots Helena, and his heart is struck with love. <laughs> Helena, Helen Fair, how I was wrong to ever love another. I love only thee. Lysander, nay, not in love with Hermia. <laughs> Her name and visage are hateful to me now. All there is. Is Helen? Mm, step away from her, sir. 
She's my girl. What? No, she's my girl. My girl. My girl. They're talking about my girl, my girl. As Helen runs away, crying into the night, <laughs> the boys continue their fracas. I saw her first. Did not. Did too. I demand satisfaction. Well, the man that can't get it to Satisfaction. Satisfaction. Can't get to no. no. Satisfaction. At this, Demetrius and Lysander both devolve into the ancient tradition of the Shakespearean Slappy Fight! <laughs> and they carry their fight off camera. And put your camera down! Put your, do not tape this! Do not tape this! At this, you hit my. Um, Hermia awakens. Ow! Where is my love? Where is Lysander? I am all by myself. I don't want to be all by myself anymore. And she runs off into the woods. At this, Titania awakens. Oh, what a delightful nap. Now, to what business shall I attend? Oh my, monster, how, how I love thee. Yeah. Oh, I, sweet monster. Yeah. <laughs> monster, thou art so funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thou needs must tell me more. Fairies. Betty. Betty. <laughs> I had trouble with my camera. I'm ready. I did not see the gorilla bear. Are, are, are you okay, buddy? Make him comfortable. Bring him hay, sweet hay, and a brush, oh, and a pillow. Yeehaw, yeehaw. Indeed, my love. Thou art with the queen now. As they all giggle away into the darkness. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Oberon again makes his presence known. He says it again with his microphone on. Puck again! <laughs> you rang? What news, Hobgoblin? Things seem awry. My mistress with a monster is in love! <laughs> I mean, I, 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 you got, that was a good one. That was a good one. It does well, but uh, what of the Athenian girl and the moron? Well, all humans look the same to me. And both of the boys seem largely indistinguishable in both looks and deed. So I had them each fall in love with the tall one. Puck, that, that is not how I wanted this to go. Oh, come on, it's hilarious. Puck, fix it. I go, I go, look how I go. Meanwhile, on the other, other side of the forest, we see how the four youths... Not youths. Ah, not youths. Yes, 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 thank you. We see how the four youths are getting along. Helen, I love thee. No, he doesn't. I love thee. But Lysander, I love thee. Do not play the fool. This is all thy doing. My doing? I, because neither of them have wit enough to enact this charge without coaching from another. Why would I do this to thee? Thou art my bestie. And thou wert my heart of my heart, but spite entered in and made thee hate me. I shall hate her all the more for it. Away, dwarf. Acorn. Hobbit. Halfling with your hairy feet. Why are you treating me so? You don't actually know how tall I am. You can't tell such things in a Zoom meeting. You've been calling me tiny the entire show. I'm average height. 
But yeah, that's that's true. I'm I'm actually only four foot eleven. Yeah, but you're very tall, four foot eleven. You came across as an Amazon on my stream, and Hermia is just a little golem, no longer my precious. Oh, that does it. <laughs> Though she is but little, she is fierce! And they all run away off into the deeper woods, towards the Enchanted Forest. Meanwhile, at the Enchanted Forest, Titania hath brought her new bow to see the sights. And on Chronos Day nights, we have karaoke. Tis DJ'd by my soon-to-be ex, but then thou canst have the job. Hee-haw, hee-haw! And... Act of? Oh no, not anymore. You can ha you can live here, and here you will be a star. Hee ha, hee ha. Yes, you shall indeed headline hereupon. No longer fretting and strutting up and down the boards of some playhouse, but here. Here you shall be remembered. Here thou shalt bottle fame and brew glory. Yeah, yeah. Oh, how I love thee. How I dote on thee. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. Huzzah. Yeah. At this moment, Puck begins to weave her magic once more. Up and down, up and down. Goblin lead them up and down. I am feared in field and town. I shall bring you up and down. Now sleep! As the four Athenians, Titania and Bottom all fall once again into a magical slumber, Puck continues her magic. See as thou wast wont to see. Be as thou wast wont to be. Jack shall have Jill, not to go ill, and all shall be well. Awake, Titania. What? Ew! Oberon. Oberon. Hmm? What a dream I've had. Wait, wait. Did you know of this? Tell me how it is I came to be found with these mortals on the ground. Tis a long story, my dearest love with some fantastic musical numbers, a line of which I did not write myself, and I shall tell thee all about it at dinner. Of course. Huzzah. Huzzah. And the changeling child, can I have him for my Instagram? I know not much about babies, my love, but children are not for Instagram. They're for silly YouTube videos. You never really learn, do you? Oh. How silly I was. Hashtag like and subscribe. But wait, <laughs> the mortal stir. We are invisible. Skilladoo, 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 skilladoo. Helena and Hermia awake and their eyes lock. Oh, what, what happened? Wait, we were friends once. And more, I think we can be so again. Demetrius and Lysander awake and their eyes lock. Who? What? Why? My friend. My love. It took thee long enough. Dost thou want to join me for Chronos Night Karaoke? We're already here at the Enchanted Forest Nightclub. I'd love nothing better. <sighs> Thou art the heart of my heart, and thou art mine forever. Want to go to Themyscira? Uh, yes. And, and as Hermia and Helena exit arm in arm towards the island of the Amazons, true wonder women that they are, and Demetrius and Lysander head over to pick out some great duets for karaoke night. I call Justin Bieber. <laughs> of course you do. Oberon, DJ of the Enchanted Forest, and King of the Fae calls Puck over to him once more. You've pucked it up again. How? First you had both boys in love with one girl after they were already both after the other girl and now they're together? I had nothing to do with this. 
the magic of their love saw through mine. That's true, good Robin. I guess what Shakespeare said is true. All you need is love. Love is all you need. 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 Shakespeare never said that. Oh, shh. Let him think that he did. Thank I've got you, a plus seven on persuasion and he needs all the help he can get. My fairy queen and most fabulous spouse. You really are a nerd. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, Adias! Good to see thee again. Will thou be singing the usual? I, 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 I will survive. For I needs must make peace with this brave new world. Thou has such people in it. Love is love. It just wants what it wants. I, I, will I will survive. As long as I know I know I'm still alive, I will survive. So say we all. To thine own self be true. That's right. And let's sing some karaoke. <laughs> when my cue comes, uh, call me. I will answer. Uh, my next is Most Fair Pyramus. Uh, um, oh, uh, stolen hence and left me asleep. I have had a most rare vision. I have had a dream. I passed the wit of man to say what dream it was. The man is but an ass if you go about to expound this dream. I, I dreamed a dream of time gone by. And in that dream, oh, but I was dreaming. I, I dreamed of love that never died. And in my dream, my love was dreaming. Oh, I, I dreamt that I would get to talk and not be paraded about by some silly figure, but to really talk. But man is a simple toy and a plaything if he thinks he can talk with meaning, perchance and peradventure anyone to listen. Pinocchio was broken if uh, his strings have been cut. Why are we here if not to say something? There is so much we can say, but we oft choose not to say aught at all. I could talk about my pride, your pride, their pride. Pride is sometimes swallowed and sometimes worn proudly on a sleeve, sometimes meaning little and sometimes meaning everything. Somewhere their pride with the colors of their nations and some with all the shades and hues of the spectrum itself, a veritable rainbow of choices, full of so many strange dishes that are baked with joy and with love. Some wear their pride like unto a lion that roars, and the duke will yell, let him roar again, let him roar again, and then bedeck themselves in the colors of Godric the Great, in crimson and gold. Oh, I may say these things, dare I so? But nay, I will walk my silly waltz, speak my part, and they will cheer me for it. Luke drank the blue milk from a space cow, yet uh, I am well. Mega maid hath gone from suck to blow, yet I am well. Space for one hath gone to plaid, yet I am well. Methought I was, there is no man can tell what. Methought I was, methought I had, oh, but man is a patched fool if he were offered to say what methought I had. The eye of man hath not heard, the ear of man hath not seen, man's hand is not able to taste, his tongue not to conceive, nor his heart to report what my dream was. I will go to Peter Quince to write a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream, because it hath no bottom. <laughs> Bottom's up. If these shadows have offended, think but this and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear. And this weak and winding theme, no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we shall mend. And as I am an honest bard, if I have an end reward, now to escape the net troll's call, please don't at me. And good night to all. Give me your hands if we be friends. And Shakespeare shall restore amends. What about us? What do you mean, what about us? 
The show's over, Peas Blossom. There's nothing more to do. Nay, nay, Dancing Glen. I never found the Grolder Bear. That's probably for the best. You're right, Dancing Glen. We should sing a final song. After all, it's karaoke night with DJ Oberon. Ooh, hit it, Twig and Foxy. Yeah. <laughs> This has been the fourth production of The Social Distancing Players. I am your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. If you enjoyed watching this show half as much as we enjoy performing it and I enjoyed writing it, then we enjoyed it twice as much as you did, and that's called math. Now, whatever you feel the show is worth, a one, a five, a 10, for a 50, you can be in the next show. Go to our Indiegogo page. It, the link is there in the comments of the show and also in the show description. For those of you watching the show, not live, not right now, you can go donate too. The actors still need money. They have terrible habits like paying their bills and eating groceries and 
all the rest and making weird hashtags while being a ginger and that is hard work. So my friends, from all of us here to all of you out there, we love you. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. And always remember, I love you. You love me. This mutual glorious affection. Maisha, we missed you tonight. We hope that you'll join us again. We love you. And come back and join us again. Also, this Saturday night, join the Zenith players for the all-female and female-identifying production of Julius Caesar. Let's do that. Let's make some art. Join me Saturday afternoon about 2.30ish over on the New Jersey Ren Fairs channel for Romeo and Juliet, the flying implement of Doom Edition. The proceeds for that will all be going to charity. Thanks for joining us. Peace and long life, everybody. Live long and prosper. Shakespeare out. Bye-bye. And can I, how do I turn this off? Ha! Oh, stop recording. That's the button I hit. There we go. Ha! Oh, no.